Hello Aces, Ace Combat Fan is back here with the second episode of the History of Stranger Nation series. Actually, I made a new playlist for the series and I added a link to the video's description so be sure to check that out. Before we get started with the actual video, a little bit on the feedback I've received. I'm really happy you guys are enjoying the History of Stranger Nation series and the two videos I've posted so far. I also have read your comments and Oxia is going to be the next country featured in this series. As of course you have noticed by the title in the video. We know that Ace Combat 7 is coming up this year so why not feature one of the main countries in AC7 so we can understand the background that might have led to the events in the new game. As far as the history of Stranger Nations go, I'll be making some changes. From now on, the videos on this series will be split into two parts. Part 1 will only be comprised of facts. So stuff that officially happened in the series and in part 2 we will only have the theories because I know you all like theories. I'm doing this because it's important that we have a clear line on what actually happened to what I personally think that happened or could have happened. Talking about theories, be sure to share your theories in the part 1 of this video because I'll be looking at the comment section since many of you have some very interesting theories and different points of views. If I see an interesting comment and if I think it's an idea I can build upon, it could be featured in the second part of this video. Before we get started, just two things. First, I just wanted to express my huge thanks to our aces from Acepedia who helped me in the research and editing of this video. And second, pause the video, go get a snack and a drink because another Ace Combo documentary is about to start. I hope you like it. The Ocean Federation, one of modern day Stranger superpowers, is one of the largest countries in Stranger, stretching from south of the equator all the way north close to the North Pole. Its capital is the Sunshine City of Auroid right by the equator, and its currency is the Ocean Zoller. Ocea is surrounded by the Ceres and Pacific Oceans to the west, the Arctic Ocean to the north, and the Spring Sea to the east. In the year of 2010, this was the map of Osea, and we can see that it borders the countries of Belka, Usio, and Sapping to the northeast, Wello to the north, and an unknown country to the south. Historically, Osea has been very active in Strangers' politics and was one of the main protagonists in the games Ace Combat 5, Ace Combat 0, and now in the upcoming Ace Combat 7. Adding to the list of featured games, Osea is a key country in the events related to Ace Combat 2 or its remake, Ace Combat 3D. Together with the majority of Strangers Nations, not much is known about its early history, and material on the subject is scarce. The following then is what I could find for Osea, but there may be more information that I didn't get to see. The earliest records found about Osea date to the beginning of the 20th century. In the year of 1905, Osea and Belka entered into an armored conflict for an unknown reason, and this conflict was later called the Osean War. This was a revolutionary conflict in terms of military history because it was the first time in Strange Rule that aircraft went from a supportive reconnaissance role to an actual combat role. The Balkans were true pioneers when it comes to aerial warfare because Belka was the first country to form up an air force right in the beginning of the war. Belkan military strategists first started using aircraft to support their ground troops through reconnaissance missions but later they realized that they could use air power to directly attack the enemy by using bombers, something that the Oceans hadn't thought about it and could do little to defend themselves. As the Balkan bombing missions became more frequent, the Oceans then realized that aerial warfare would become a critical aspect of the war and soon followed by creating their own air force. Unfortunately for the Oceans, the Balkan air force was very well organized. Its pilots were more trained and their fighter aircraft more maneuverable. It was in the early days of air-to-air -air combat that the Belkan Air Force gained the reputation of being one of the best in the world, if not the best. After five years of fighting, in the year of 1910, the conflict ended, but there is no confirmation as to which country won. Time went by and the next thing we know about Osea is its involvement during Strangers' Cold War. In the 1980s, tensions started to rise between Osea and another country on the other side of the ocean, the Union of the Yuktubunian Republics. During Stranger's Cold War, there was an arms race between the two countries and the most notable examples of weapons being developed at the time were the Syntaxi class submarine by the Yuktubanians and the maneuverable orbiting spacecraft by Osea, the concept that would give birth to the Arkbird. At the time, the Osean Department of Defense was very worried about the technological advances made by the Yuktubanians in the field of submarine-launched ballistic missiles. To prevent a possible Yuktubani attack with these missiles launched from submarines, Osea began the development of laser weaponry to intercept the long-range missiles during mid-flight, and of course they were planning to mount those weapons in the Arkbird concept. 
Despite the huge technological developments achieved during the Ocean Yuktubanian rivalry, the war remained cold and these weapons were never used in an actual conflict. The years passed and on October 8th of 1990, the Ocean government passed the Rearmament Declaration. Not many details are known about this declaration, but there was a reorganization within OC's military branches involving the transfer of members from one to the other. In the following year of 1991, OC bought the Great Lakes region and some islands from Belka and annexed them to its territory. Belka was going through a deep recession, an economic crisis that had its origins in the mid to late 80s. Because of this economic crisis, several Belkan regions seceded and gained their independence such as Ustio, Gabet, and Recta. Actually, Recta was an independent country, then it was invaded and incorporated by Belka. Later it regained its independence during the late 80s. Belka tried to overcome its financial problems by selling even more land to other countries, including Osea, but they were not successful. Still in the year of 1991, after buying some islands together with the Great Lakes region, Osea proposed a joint development program to the Balkans in order to explore the natural resources on those islands. Desperately needing money, the Balkans agreed to cooperate, but it turns out that Osea was actually manipulating Belka by lying about the quantity of natural resources. The truth is that the natural resources were very few in quantity. Belka publicly condemned Osea to the international community, and after this failed joint project, Belka's decaying economy just got worse. The next known chapter in Osea's history is one of everyone's favorites. The Belkan War. The roots of the war lie in the Belkan Federal Law Review that took place in 1988. Belka, suffering from economic strife, permitted its eastern territory to secede. And the Republic of Ustio was born. But Belka's economic troubles did not subside. Meanwhile, taking advantage of the situation, the world superpower Osea continued to flourish. Amidst the economic panic, an extreme right-wing party took power within Belka, aiming to restore strength and stability to the nation. And on March 25, 1995, with the discovery of natural resources in Ustio, Belka began to invade its neighbors. It was the beginning of the Belkan War. Unprepared, each country fell quickly before the might of the legendary Belkan Air Force. In just a few days, they occupied all territories except for the mountain range. In response, the occupied Ustio government military placed all their hopes on a joint operation between Osea and the foreign mercenary forces. In only a matter of days, Belkan ground forces completely retook the Great Lakes region and advanced deep into Ocean territory. The Ocean government took quick action by taking the lead in the newly formed Allied forces, together with the Republic of Ustio and the Kingdom of Sapin, given that they were fighting against the same enemy. It's true too that Yuktibania joined the Allied forces at some point, but its contributions are still unknown. One of the most important contributions from Osea to the Allied war effort was their participation in the offensive campaign number 4101 when they deployed their third naval fleet, which included the aircraft carrier Castro, to occupy the Futura Canal and establish a sea lane to serve as a supply route to the Allied forces. You all must be familiar with the individual operations and missions during the war, so we can summarize OCS participation in the war by saying that they were the backbone of the Allied forces in the air, ground and sea. The majority of the Allied military forces belong to the Ocean military, and given that they are one of the world's superpowers, it is safe to assume that they use their massive resources and industry to supply the other Allied members. The war continued. Battles were fierce and intense, but the Allied forces did manage to change the tide of the war and start advancing into southern Belka. After the Belkan government realized it would no longer be able to stop the Allied forces in the many fronts of the war, it carried out a huge self-sacrifice, only to save a small part of the country. June 6, 1995. The Belkans set off seven nuclear explosions on their own soil. Maybe their old militaristic leaders couldn't stand the idea of allied forces invading their land. 
and declared to the world that the land to the north was the holy land of Belka. According to official records, more than 12,000 people died. It was a grand self-sacrifice that engulfed all. The only thing remaining was the desolate landscape. After what happened, Belka had no other option but to agree to an unconditional surrender. And this happened two weeks after the nuclear detonations on the day of... June 20th, 1995. A treaty declaring a cessation of hostilities was signed in Lumen, a city on the border of South Belka and Osia. It was a one-sided treaty that heavily favored Osia. The borders of the affected countries that fluxed greatly over the past years finally settled down at the cost of many human lives. The impact of the seven nuclear detonations on the world's psyche was great. Those who witnessed the carnage went on to organize a global arms reduction. Shortly after the treaty signing, some members of the Balkan military went underground in order to escape the Allied prosecution for war crimes. Amongst them we have the leader of the Schwarz squadron, Dominic Zuboff, and the entire Grabark and Offner squadrons, which we will talk about later on. Other Balkan soldiers went underground too, but instead of escaping Allied prosecution, they formed a terrorist organization called the Falcons of Dawn. This terrorist group was formed up in the region of South Belka and its leaders were former pilots from the Belkan Air Force. They remained relatively inactive after the Belkan War but started carrying out attacks against Osia around the year of 2005. In the aftermath of the Belkan War, Osia gained control of Southern Belka. This territory was incorporated into Osia but its people felt excluded and carried a deep hatred against Osia over the control of the region. Despite the anger against the Allies, the Balkan government received help from both Osia and Yuktubania with the reconstruction efforts. The relationship between Osia and Yuktubania drastically improved in 1996, the year after the war. The two countries signed the Yuktubania peace treaty that brought an end to strangers' long-lasting Cold War. While we can safely assume that the majority of the populations in both countries welcomed the end of the tensions between the world's two superpowers, Nationalists in both countries opposed the treaty. They regarded the peace treaty as a sign of weakness that left the country vulnerable to an enemy attack. As a result of these nationalist ideas, the surviving members of the Yosian Air Defense Forces Wizard Squadron rebelled and attempted to assassinate the president of Osia. Wizard 4, Josef Beletsky, allegedly was the mastermind of the assassination plan together with Wizard 1, Joshua Luke and Bristol. However, one of the members of the assassination plan leaked the information and the survivors of the Ocean Wizard Squadron were pursued by the Ocean Special Forces. During a confrontation with the Special Forces, some members of the Wizard Squadron were killed and their surviving ones were captured and sent to prison. The post balkan War years were very good for both Ocean and Yuktubania. The economy of the world's two superpowers were growing and tensions between them died down. But things started to heat up in the continent of Yuzia. Some nations in Yuzia were afraid of how quickly the superpowers were growing and gaining influence in the international stage. And in order to counterattack this trend, some nations in the north and west parts of Yuzia banded together in order to form a union. Some nations in the south of Yuzia fiercely protested the creation of an Yuzian union and sought a military defense pact with Osia in order to guarantee their independence. Osia agreed to the defense pact with several UCA nations, but on the day of the treaty signing... A coup on the day of the treaty signing? A military coup has been staged in USEA Allied Sector NAP-2700. After a long history of heated tension, the nations of USEA banded together to face the rising threat of two growing superpowers. However, in opposition to their efforts, a group of southern nations plotted to join the Ocean Federation. The northern and western nations strongly protested the movement, but a military pact has already been extended to the South's leaders. On the day of the signing with the Ocean Federation, fearing the loss of mining rights and invasive Ocean military presence, conservative extremists organized a large-scale coup d'etat that broke out simultaneously across the continent. Their power spread rapidly with merciless fighting against the Allied forces in all regions. The 
The Eugene Allied forces hope to quell the conflict at an early stage, but have been forced to retreat on all fronts. They fear that defeat was only a matter of time. However, in response to the rebels' actions, Allied headquarters has initiated Operation Fighter's Honor. You have been chosen as a member of Special Tactical Fighter Squadron Scarface. There have already been civilian casualties, and the Allied forces cannot idly sit by. Quickly defeat the rebel forces. Scarface Squadron, head out. Due to the political turmoil in Uzia, where even the southern countries had coup d'etats, and due to the fact that the defense treaty wasn't even signed on time, Uzia did not interfere with what would be called the first Uzian Continental War, the one we see in Ace Combat 2 or its remake Ace Combat 3D. Years passed and because Yuktubania wasn't seen as an enemy anymore, the Uzian government started to cut the military budget and use it to fund its space program a move supported by several other nations. It was during this period that the mass driver was built at Osea's Bassett Space Center, allowing them to literally catapult spacecraft into space with the aid of electromagnetic energy. At some point, Osea built the Arkbird with Yuktubania's help, and the Oceans started using it as a weapon to clear the remaining fragments of the Ulysses asteroid that remain in Stranger's orbit. The Arkbird managed to clear up 80% of the orbital debris, and adding to that it served as a test platform to several scientific experiments. In the year of 2008, Osea hosted Stranger's G7 summit on board the Arkbirds on Stranger's orbit. The meeting included representatives from Osea, Yuktubania, Eruja during its interim government, the Federation of Central Usia, Verusa, Nordlands, and from the continent of Ania, either Emeria or the Kingdom of Northern Avec, since Slovakia was facing a civil war at the time. During the 2008 G7 summit, we had the Arkbird Declaration. Plans for international space developments were made, and other significant peace policies, including a ban on nuclear proliferation, were discussed. In the year of 2010, strange things started to happen on Osea's west coast with the intrusion and engagement with some unidentified aircraft. This is when the events of Ace Combat 5 happen and they go from September of 2010 to the very last day of the year. I'm going to assume that all of you know that a secret Balkan group known as the Grain Men was manipulating both countries, Osea and Yuktubania, in order to obtain revenge after the Balkan War that they lost in the year of 1995. One of the things worth mentioning is that sometime after the Balkan War, both Osea and Yuktubania had some Balkan Air Force squadrons join their air force as aggressor squadrons. They were the Grabark Squadron for Osea, also known as the 8492nd Squadron, and the Offner Squadron for Yuktubania, but they kept the same name while in the Yuktubanian Air Force. The two countries thought this would be a gesture of cooperation with Belkat after the war, and of course they could not imagine that these two squadrons would play a key role in manipulating the two countries in the Circum Pacific War. For the purpose of this documentary, I'll skip the events of Ace Combat 5 because that's another topic for another video and I think you all know what happened. In the year 2011, there was an air show over November City featuring three remarkable aircraft that were on Ocean hands. The ADF-01 Morgan, the X-02 Wyvern and the ADF-01 Falcon. This is the last record about Ocean history that I could find from the games, Ace Combat books or extra sources such as Strangers magazines that were posted on the game's official websites. The future of Osea and how it connects to the events of Ace Combat 7 and the war against Eruja are still unknown so far and I could tell a lot of stuff of what I think but that I'll keep for the second part of the video. What we know so far is that Osea will be taking a leading role in the International Union peacekeeping force against the Erosian aggression. This concludes pretty much everything we know about the Osean Federation. I hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something more about the Ace Combat series. Then again, huge thanks to the staff from Acepedia for their help in the video. And for you Aces that are watching, stay tuned for part 2, the Fury part of the history of Osea. Before you go, please let me know was there anything I missed? What did you think about this video? And what are your theories concerning Osea? This was Ace Combat Fan, I hope you have enjoyed this video and stay tuned on the channel for more Ace Combat.